Welcome back to section one, part two of my procedural story generation tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, we will be starting on our basic framework for uh, needs-based AI. I will discuss advertisements, false advertisements, pure advertisements, um, owner ownership later on, maybe, and then um, basic understanding of how these are actually weighed. So we'll make some helper functions and it, it'll be a fun time. <laughs> first things first, we're going to go to header files, add new item. We're going to make a file named entity. In entity, we're going to include stdafx. And I'm going, we're also going to include um, Memory, I'm going to include algorithm. Um, I'll see STD lib. I'm going to be using namespace system. Just generic stuff. Uh, I'll, first of all, I'm going to describe how this works. So how needs-based AI works is you have your entity that is in a particular position in the world and there are advertisements located around it. The entity uh, figures out which advertisements it wants to take the most. It doesn't know whether the advertisement is pure, meaning it gives the full value that it's advertising. So it says it gives you 50 wealth, it will give you 50 wealth, or if it's a false advertisement. So it, gives, it says it will give you 50 wealth, it actually gives you 40. The entity has no idea if it's pure or false. But these advertisements are located everywhere. You can have hypothetically infinite. You really, in a small environment, you shouldn't have more than a few hundred. I, I don't see many cases, unless you're doing open worlds, where you want more than a few hundred. <laughs> um, but um, the advertisements have both positive and negative effects to the entity. So if, if, the, if the entity takes an advertisement called work, and work adds a negative stress aspect, but also adds a positive work ethnic aspect um, that gets executed and both of those can be determined falsely or purely. I don't know if it's actually referred to false and pure advertisements. That's just something that I refer to it as. Other people may refer to it as something different. But let's uh, let's create a cost structure. Now a cost structure is exactly what I described. It's the structure containing, um, it's a structure containing how much it affects our entity. So if the struct is, if the cost says um, it'll reduce your health by 50, then it'll reduce your health by near 50. So I can, I don't know, that's not making much sense. <laughs> um, just think of it like the different aspects of an actual advertisement. So we're gonna say short type, and what that is, uh, type is the type of cost we're referring to. Um, I, you know, e.g. Um, wealth, health, stress, etc. And now we have our int return value, and this is how much of the return value is, is advertised to the entity. Now, initially, we are we will not be making it so the entity knows the difference between pure and false advertising. You, it won't be able to differentiate uh, between them, but it can sort of assume. I always assume the worst case scenario, always assume that it's false advertising. That way it can figure out, okay, this is how much time it'll take me to complete this task. Would it really make sense that this is actually being advertised at this value? Um, it's actually really not that hard to implement. It's really only two or three lines, but it's, um, it's a little hard to understand and imagine from an abstract point, unless you just dive in and see the code which is why we're doing this. <laughs> so we're just gonna make a constructor, short t, um, r, 
we're going to say this height equals t this uh, return equals r. Oh, oops. That was stupid. Okay, maybe let's move that. Does not make a difference? But I don't think it makes a difference. No, whatever. Um, now another thing that we need to define is we need to specify what these different types are. Uh, so we are going to say minimum uh, cost types. Now we can say that it can be um, health, food, um, And I guess we could also say um, social acceptance. That was something we'll do in section two. So we aren't using this right now. Do not get used. Okay. Now let's create a advertisement structure. Advertisement. I probably spelled that wrong. Yes, I did. Um, okay, so we're going to need SCD there. Just to save a little bit of time. <laughs> Do the name space SCD. Okay, there we go. Vector. And we have a vector of cost, and we say we're going to say these are negative. Bad things to our entity. And we're going to have a vector of costs again. And we're going to say these are positive costs. These help our entity. Okay, now we are um, going to. That's not required. Uh, we're going to give these a name. For just simplicity purposes, uh, help helps the programmer differentiate between advertisements. It, those um, they're they're very very useful. <laughs> oh, also we're going to do uh, define we are currently debugging. No. I'm just going to hit you here. DBAI. <laughs> um, now, as I was saying before, advertisements each take a particular amount of time for the entity to, to complete. That's what the, that's where the false advertisement, advertisements come from. So, if it takes you five days to make a sandwich, and you manage to starve in those five days, the advertisement has more of a negative effect. It's a false advertisement than it promises. So now we're going to uh, have a short completion time. Um, int way value. What the weight value is, is um, let's say the higher your health, the faster you complete this task. Um, it just means that how long the task takes isn't constant. The weight value can literally be your distance from the task. So let's say it takes you five days to go, well, it takes you two hours to drive to your job. Well, the weight value could be the two hours. No, the, what am I saying? The weight value could be the distance to calculate the two hours. <laughs> um, obviously, once these get a lot more complex, you can't just compute completion time like this turns almost in, into a civil engineering problem and I don't imagine I'll be getting into that <laughs> because then you have to worry about traffic, you have to worry about the how many entities are aligned to use that facility and it's it's brutal. Just ignore that.
Okay, so since this is a um, no, sorry, that. Um, so let's say that our completion time is one hundred divided by the weight values, meaning that if um, if our health is full at one hundred then this value is zero, plus a value that I'm call t const, which is our time constant, which means basically it takes longer to cook a chicken than it does to write a novel, which is, it, it's pure, it's obvious, need a way to specify it, so now we're gonna have a time constant, which means the harder the task, the bigger you're gonna make that time constant, so short t const. This is our time constant. It is harder to cook a chicken than, what am I saying? It is <laughs> quicker to cook a chicken than it is to write a book. Um, okay. And we're not going to do ownership yet. We can do that later. Uh, ownership just means like this advertisement is owned by an entity, so you, like you're not going to steal another entity's food from their fridge. It just it's it wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> okay. So now here comes the fun part. We're going to write our entity class. So uh, let's just. Make that private. Um, so we're going to name bool death. Are we still alive? Uh, sure, no. Don't need that. Um, okay, let's do short health. Um, hunger. Are we. Okay. Um, okay, now we have deltas, so now we get short, well, short hunger. And this goes in with what I was saying before. Like, as time progresses, it, you have to use a certain amount of resource every iteration, otherwise it just gets stagnant. Like, if no one loses health or food by waiting a day or an hour or a minute, it gets boring. So we're going to have hunger delta, short health, no, what did I do? Health delta, and then wealth delta. Um, DK over time. And we're going to do int wealth. SP is short. I don't imagine it would store all of the information we need for wealth. Yeah. From my personal experience, wealth gets well above the limits of short very, very often. Wealth can climb to like 10,000, um, depending on what you put as the input variables. I seem to uh, usually get wealth around 10,000 using this method, so which means that you just have to crank up the prices. Obviously, in our final system, that's automated. In this system, it's constant, unless you want to spend the week that it's Gus to make a quantitative analysis. Um, a quantitative analysis. Um, do we use Monte Carlo? I think we use Monte Carlo. Huh? I don't remember what we use. I think we use Monte Carlo or like um, simple regression lines. One of the two. But like, it takes a while to implement. Not worth our time here. So we're just gonna make an edit. Um, and now we're going to do, uh, let me find which one it is. Okay, we're going to do void kick. Oh, I think that, oh, what? And let's write a kick function. And we're going to say, uh, if health is greater than 
100. Oh, those 100 is AI. Always tries to um, push their way out of the system with this. <laughs> Uh, I think it's just a bug. I'd be too easy to fix. <laughs> um, okay, now we're going to apply our deltas. Delta um, minus equals delta, and then wealth minus equal wealth delta. Okay. Um, I got time. Uh, this is our tick function. This is called every update cycle when the AI is not being assigned a new task. This isn't called when it when the AI is uh, figuring out what it wants to do next. Uh, this is our update. Oh, let's make the instructor. What am I doing? Emmet's brain, we think. purposes we will not <laughs> at the moment of course um okay 